Today I fucked up by messing around and discovering a classmate is pregnant. For context, I am a med student into my second year of med school. Today we had a urine lab and for the vote of confidence, my professor decided it would be much appropriate for everyone to bring their own urine. So everyone had their urine in front of them in the container, and we were doing several tests, making slides, microscope, testing for glucose, RBCs etc. So on the central table, so after doing all my tests and recording them in my journal, I thought it would be fun to mess around. There was a pack of pregnancy strips. I don't know why the hell these things were there in the first place. So I thought literally nothing and picked up the strips and started reading the leaflet, in the meantime everyone was done and they saw me. I don't know why we all had the same idea and all 15 students picked up a strip and mindlessly dipped it in the urine container container, as expected nearly all of them tested negative, all but one. I cannot describe the horror on that girl's face, like it was really really horrified. She just without thinking took another strip and tested again, still positive. She ran out of the lab rather very visibly upset. Me and the other classmates were really awkwardly staring at each other and trying to understand what happened in this turn of events. Too long didn't read, had a routine urine lab in med school, started messing around after getting work done, everyone took a pregnancy test and one turned out positive. Next year there will be no pregnancy strips in the lab. Let's see what happens, every year is a new story! Exclamation mark. And then the guy whose strip tested positive decided to go have himself checked out for testicular cancer. This reminds me of the story my sister told me. She was training to do sonography. They were on the pregnant unit. Had a pregnant lady come in. Professor stopped and moved on to the next subject. The pregnant lady was a classmate's friend. Turns out the baby died. Missed miscarriage is a particularly awful version of the end of pregnancy. Your body doesn't tell you, your doctor has to. Edit, condolences and good thoughts to all those of us who've been through this. You won't forget, but you will get through it eventually. Reminds me of a girl I know training for being an ultrasound tech. They obviously practice on each other. Partner practicing on her is like, um, that's a baby. And that's how she found out she was pregnant. I am reminded of a story about science teachers no longer offering to do familial blood typing, guess what? You aren't your dad's kid. For the same reason. When I went to curriculum night at my kid's middle school the 8th grade science teacher told the parents, if your child is adopted and doesn't know, tell them because they will find out in science class this year. Today I fucked up by eating too much garlic. Today I fucked up when I saw this video on TikTok about roasting garlic in the oven and spreading it on toast. Being the garlic lover that I am, I gave it a shot using a, a whole head of garlic, needless to say, it tasted marvelous. So marvelous, in fact, that I ate the whole head in one sitting at lunch. Fast forward several hours and my boyfriend mentions a garlic odor coming from me. I didn't think much of it since I assumed he just smelled the leftover fragrances of cooking garlic in the house. More time goes by, and I start emitting more odors, and he asks me how much I ate so I told him. He then informs me that garlic gets released through your pores as you digest it, and that's why I smell like garlic and would continue to smell like garlic for a while. Welp, fuck. By the time we went to bed last night, I smelled so bad that I could taste the garlic in my mouth and there was nothing I could do, but hope the smell would go away by morning. I was wrong. I showered and scrubbed to no avail. I'm drinking a ton of water to help flush my system, but I've accepted that this might be my life now. Too long didn't read, I ate too much garlic and now I smell worse than Dracula's pissed off girlfriend. Last time I roasted garlic and spread it on toast, I smelled like garlic for 3 days and my farts were the worst smelling of my life. Totally worth it though, roasted garlic is so amazingly tasty. Edit, thanks for the silver. You made garlic bread. Garlic bread is my favorite food. Could honestly eat it for every meal. Or just eat it all the time without even stopping. You will never recover from becoming garlic. You might as well accept it. Here's what I would do. 
1. Sit in a tub of warm water for a week with light, make sure the water is steady warm. 2. Dig a hole in the dirt then transition into the hole, try to stay hydrated. 3. You should be much larger in a few weeks and can use yourself in things like salad, and roasted potatoes. Edito, thanks for the fame, I do small paragraphs for nominal fees. I've done this before. I used to roast garlic heads all the time and, cooked enough, they didn't generate that garlic smell. Well, one day I undercooked a garlic head. I didn't want to waste food, so I ate quite a few cloves. Smelled like garlic for about 4 days. Nothing seemed to help except time to let the garlic pass through my system. The good news is that it'll pass. The bad news is that it might be a few days until you no longer smell like garlic. I used to pickle garlic and put it on salads or just eat a few cloves straight for a snack. My girlfriend slash now wife made me stop as we were getting serious. A few years ago right after moving to Florida, I was being ravaged by mosquitoes. I read about the benefits of garlic intake as a natural deterrent. So I got a bunch of garlic pills and added a bunch of garlic to most of my meals. A few days later I went for a walk at lunch, in about 90 degrees. I had a bit of sweat build up but was very happy to get back into the AC. While sitting in my office a number of people were walking past asking about who had garlic something for lunch. It wasn't until Till then I got a whiff of myself and was hit by a sweaty garlic stench. For the next week the smell got worse and worse, even with the slightest perspiration. Being in FL, basically any time you're outside, you're going to sweat. I basically stunk 24-7. I very quickly cut the pills and limited my intake after that, and it probably took about a week to clear it out my system. The garlic kept the mozzies away, as well as any other human being. Today I fucked up by eating a buttload of violet candy, didn't research ingredients well enough, lost a bunch of weight, and then paid for it, in a buttload. Edit for disclaimer, tilde for those messaging me asking for the brand name, stop. I will continue to ignore. I asked for one boundary and stated my reason for doing so. I don't need any more qualifiers. Tilde I also did not intend for this post to become a chat about encouraging unhealthy and damaging eating habits. Please seek help if you are suffering from an ed or trying to find a quick and easy diet in the form of laxatives or other methods, these are damaging. I did not consider this entirely, but it's something that has been made aware to me. The story might be written in a funny way, but that's my process of the events. It wasn't funny or cool that I lost weight and dehydrated myself in this method. It was painful and I'm going to need some recovery. Edit 2, remove identifiers and potential encouragement for harmful ed behaviors. So, here's the thing. I may or may not have a slight to moderate addiction to these delicious violet mint candies. I'm choosing not to give away the name of the maker of these candies tilde in an effort to protect the small company. Tilde I won't sully the their reputation because I sullied my toilet. I recently found these succulent fragrant treats again after trying them years ago on a whim. They are the perfect blend of strong fragrance and chalky texture. I am enthralled with them. Or, I was. I forgot all about them until that first fateful day, about 4 or 5 weeks ago, while browsing online for nostalgic candies. Fuck up one, I found the same brand of violet candies and was very excited to have them again. I ate all 4 packages of mints in an embarrassingly short time. I started having some minor poopy issues here and there, but chalked it up to basic bacteria and subsequently forgot about them. I even went to so far as to passively blame my boyfriend by asking him if our dinners were giving him issues too. He has been picking up a lot of the slack in the cooking department since I got a second job. Bless him. Fuck up too, seeing how I needed to refuel my latest addiction, I went directly to the manufacturer's website and, you guessed it, ordered two whole boxes of mints. Fuck up 2.0, almost a moment of clarity something told me look up the ingredients of the mints, just for shits, lol, and giggles. I briefly read something about, specific chemical name, but the article had too much of that darn fancy science mumbo jumbo. So, I went on with my life, or, what was to become of it, my careless days of yore. I should have trusted my gut, literally. I've read that animals have basic instincts of impending doom, like a signal of their own death. 
If only I knew my impending doom would result in the lament of my toilet. My triumph turned to tragedy. My seemingly harmless addiction leading me into a dark bathroom of despair. Third and final fuck up, or, the violet flower in rapture and evacuation of the bowels, since the delivery date of my precious violet gold mine, I prided myself in how well I was conserving the candies. I only ate a few here or there, and would just pop a few in my mouth at work. Luckily I have been busy with both of my jobs, so I only ate them at home for the most part. And so began the turmoil of my poor gastrointestinal system. I began to notice more frequent trips to the bathroom, oftentimes more and more painful and horribly smelling diarrhea. I mentioned it to my boy friend because I was becoming concerned. I told him it's the smell, it's like nothing I've ever dealt with. It's not normal, but more like a chemical smell. I even asked my boyfriend a few more times if he was having similar issues. I was also very projective and passive aggressive about his cleanliness around the kitchen. I feel awful and know I owe him a big fat apology when I see him. Poor guy frown. Side note, I chalked these bathroom trips to stress from the recent Zoom family therapy sessions, thinking I was so clever for remembering that stress can do that to you, you know. I totally didn't take into account that I was eating the mints during therapy. Yeah, I'm such an academic. Fuck up assurance and toilet resolution, a few days ago I started noticing my weight was dropping pretty fast. Again, in my brilliance. I credited this to me working a lot as well as quitting soda. I switched to tea and coffee. I also thought the coffee was to blame, but coffee never gave me those painful, cramping, and horrid blowouts. Last night I stayed up very late talking on the phone for almost 3 hours with my sister, catching up about stuff that happened in our family therapy. By the time our call was up, I had consumed one and one third entire packages, about 20 minutes or so in just that phone call's time. A new record. But there are no wins here, only profound losses. Today's fuck up confirmation, I woke up a few hours later at the Iskrak, lol, of dawn. I was strangely feeling hungry. BF went to work. I kissed him goodbye and went back to bed, or so I thought. A violent violet cramp began to rumble until I was nearly doubling over on my way to the bathroom. Total, Violet, recall. Bonus Willy Wonka quote, you're pooping violent violet. And somewhere between my agony and my confusion, something just clicked. I went to search that pesky chemical I remembered from the ingredient list. And Velp, what would you know, magnesium stearate, when consumed beyond small doses, acts like a laxative effect. Fuck. For clarification, I consumed almost 14 entire packs of mints, plus a few extra from the first order, in 4 to 5 goddamn weeks. I did the math for 18 packages, that's 270 mints. 270? I bowels when reading this, I gotta get out of here. PLS kill me. Jesus Christ I'm so dumb it hurts. It literally hurts. My butthole. My pride. My self assurance. But most of all, my butthole. The memory of these mints has been tainted by my willful ignorance, now conditioned by my folly. I feel sick just looking at them now. R.I.P. my sweet violet mints of long ago, once held in the light of careless happiness, now fallen to the deepest recesses of a hell where toilet blowouts reign. Dash, 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 dash. But most of all, I'm sorry to you, my sweet innocent boyfriend. You're amazing and I will be reading you this after work. Love you be frown. Too long didn't read, for those with normal gut health. I ate a fuck ton of violet candies in a very short time and got horrible diarrhea for weeks. Turns out it was a chemical ingredient that caused a laxative effect. Too long didn't read, light version, bad thing in candy make tum tum go ouchie. Ate many candy in short time. Feel sad and not smart in brain.